G'day there guys, it's Connie here again from Marky Industries and we're reading some more stories from Reddit today. As always, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and also the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Alrighty ladies and gents, we're starting on Am I the A-hole today? This one was written by user Fuda Good Times, and it's titled Am I the A-hole for telling my sister I won't be her surrogate? Excuse my errors and etiquette, I'm not a frequent to Reddit. My friend suggested I use her throwaway account to make this post, so please be gentle with me as much as strangers on the internet can be. I, Celeste, 30, female, have an identical twin sister. We'll call her Stacy for the sake of the story. Our mother unfortunately passed in child labour and we were raised by our father. Stacy has been married to Jeff for eight years and I've been in a relationship with Mike for three years now. One thing I've always known about my sister is that she wanted to be a mum. Even when we were children, she was always thinking about wedding ideas, nursery themes, baby names, etc. I was always more focused on books and having fun. I'm now a flight attendant. I'm also attempting to become a published author. My sister has not worked, ever, honestly. When we graduated high school, we went straight to college. She met her boyfriend in college and once she graduated, became a stay-at-home girlfriend until she became his wife. I have known for a while that my sister has been attempting to become pregnant unsuccessfully. She has experienced a single miscarriage and has been unable to become pregnant again after thousands and thousands of dollars being spent on IVF and pretty much anything they could do because she wanted to experience pregnancy. After five years of no success, they have started to discuss other options. My sister isn't interested in adoption and is very adamant on having a child that has both of their DNA. Her words, not mine. About three weeks ago, she came to my house, and we were hanging out as we usually do, just chatting and watching Modern Family. She told me she had a serious question, and needed to ask me while she still has her nerves. It scared me, but she asked if I could be her surrogate. I was frozen for a second, and asked what she meant. She told me that I know what a surrogate was. She needed me to be her surrogate. I expressed that she knew that I wasn't interested in having children. This could definitely be due to how we came into the world, but I'll be honest and say I've never found the thought of having children appealing in any way. I told her that I would have zero issue with donating my eggs to her, however many she needed she could have them all, but I could not carry her child. Upon hearing that, she became so angry, her face was so red, and she was just yelling about how it's obvious how jealous and hateful I am, because this is a small task. I didn't want to bring it to her attention, but she's always spoken about having more than four kids. Would the expectation be for me to do this every time? I don't know, I'm starting to feel so bad. She ended up telling me that if I couldn't do this one thing for her, how could I ever call myself her sister? She broke a picture of us I have sitting on my mantle and stormed out. Since then, she's only texted me pictures of her diaries from when we were kids, and all of their vision boards saying that I'm stopping her from creating a family for no reason, and to think about the bigger picture. My boyfriend refuses to give me advice, saying that it's my sister and he doesn't feel comfortable attempting to sway me in either direction because it's such a touchy subject. Honestly, this is the longest I've ever gone without communicating with my sister and I'm seriously on the verge of giving in. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to be a surrogate for my identical twin sister? Opie edits, then we'll get to the comments. I'm reading all of the comments and I want to say thank you so much. I feel so much better knowing I'm not the villain, but I'd be lying if I said I'm not leaning towards just doing it. This disconnect with my sister brings me immense discomfort in ways I cannot verbally express, but I see two frequent questions I want to answer to hopefully get different answers. 1. Money. My mother did not die of natural causes. It was provider error. My father sued the hospital and my sister and I have sizable trusts with that money so money is not an issue for either of us, and her husband is financially well off as well. So not working for nine months, or paying for the egg retrieval process, etc., isn't an issue in any way. It's more so her stubbornness for the baby to share our DNA, and for one of us to be carrying it. 2. Since we're identical, if she can't have a baby, how can I? Her lack of being able to have a child is due to a car accident we were in, which is also the source of the miscarriage she experienced. Due to her being in the front seat with their father, they took the brunt of the crash, unfortunately. Her body is now unable to carry a child, and she has had extreme complications with egg retrieval. 
I'm not sure about the details of how that's gone wrong, just that it's not working and not an option. It's hard to get her to discuss non-viable options so I can gain a better understanding. And three, doctors will not allow me to be a surrogate due to me not having a child. Thank you so much for this information. We have family dinner this upcoming Thursday because we always watch football with our dads and significant others. I'm sure this topic will come up if she decides to attend. I'm hoping I can bring this up to her. Yeah, well there you go, that solves that problem, doesn't it? I didn't know that you couldn't be a surrogate if you haven't already had a kid, but I guess it makes sense. Also, I'm sure the sister was speaking emotionally, but to say that it's a small task to carry someone else's child for nine months and then give birth to it is about as far off as you can get, I think. Let's see what the comments say. Most doctors would refuse to allow you to be a surrogate as you've not previously had children. She'll be hard-pressed to find one that would. Not to mention she's asking her sister to sacrifice her body and potentially her life to fulfill her dream. That's not fair at all. If she can afford IVF, she can afford a surrogate, not the a-hole. This goes beyond being unreasonable. This is the sister acting entitled over Opie's life and body just because of her own dreams of having kids with her shared DNA. To hell with Opie's own decision of not going through birth because of what happened to their mother. It's only the sister's dream that matters. The sister is acting like a damn child who isn't ready to be a parent. Quote, It's obvious how jealous and hateful I am because this is a small task. This is not a small task. This is one of the most serious medical procedures that one could ever go through. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole, but any reputable facility will outright deny this being an option. Almost all places in the US require you to go through therapy to make sure you are 200% on board. You have to already have your own kids. What she's asking will be shot down. And the places that would agree to it are places that are not caring about anything but money. So your health and any child you carry are at risk. This isn't a small thing. There are reasons they require you to have kids first. For health reasons as well as mental on you. How will you handle carrying a child? Even if you don't want kids, being pregnant is hard. The attachment you make with growing a baby. The mental of her and hubby making demands. What you can eat. How much you can work. Going out. Having a life. For nine months, they will think they have more rights than they do. Make demands as they want. Are you going to be okay with them wanting to be at the doctor appointments when you are vulnerable? Touching your belly when they want because you're nothing more than an incubator and your needs and boundaries don't matter? Being in the delivery room as well as deciding who gets to be there or how you'll deliver? No, this is not a small ask. If she's determined to have a baby of their own DNA, you can donate eggs and they can find a surrogate who'll carry the baby. Demanding you do it because they want to live the pregnancy through you run over you and your boundaries and needs, which a legal surrogate would put them in place, when they're doing it to save more money. It is selfish. So tell her. I will donate eggs for you to find a surrogate, but you don't get to throw tantrums and manipulate me into doing something with my body I don't wish to. You have just shown me how my pregnancy would be because you're not respecting me now. So why would you while I deal with carrying your child? It's time for a step back from you because while I feel for you, I'll not be abused because your wants are not more important than my needs. Then take a step back because everything she is doing is wrong and she has no right. Also concerning your boyfriend, do you think it's okay to make him watch you have someone else's kids? How about them saying he can't touch you or your belly, can't sleep with him for whatever reason? You can love your sister but giving in means most likely putting yourself at risk, ending a relationship with boyfriend, destroying the relationship with an entitled sister, mentally screwing you up. Stop letting her manipulate you and using your love for her to get her way. That's wrong. And as much as you love her, letting her destroy your life so she can have a baby the way she wants is not worth it. Now for an update. So I promised an update tomorrow, but my dad actually ended up calling me while I was hanging out and told me to come over for dinner yesterday night so we could talk. I want to start by saying thank you so much for all the comments and advice. Some of you were jerks to not only me, but my sister and boyfriend as well. I still appreciate the help. I didn't even ask about what when my dad called. I figured he'd spoken to Stacy. Based on comments, I know you guys won't be happy, but I spoke with my boyfriend about where his head was if I were to go forward with it. He told me that he loved me and would support me through any and everything, but he would not continue to sit by while my sister made me feel like trash, and if I was doing this under coercion, he would not be able to support me which I honestly completely understand. 
When we went over to my dad's for dinner, my sister and brother-in-law were already there. I spoke to them both when we walked in, but only my sister replied. My brother-in-law gave me the most disgusting look and greeted my boyfriend only. My dad sat us down at the table and there was just this awkward silence and tension I could cut with a butcher knife. He said, Somebody talk. We need to get this resolved before the game tomorrow night. My dad loves football, lol. I started off the conversation by telling her that I did some research, and atop of my initial concerns, I now had a few more and needed to know exactly what she needed from me. I first asked her what being a surrogate would look like. She just said, are you agreeing to it? When I told her no, I just needed more details, she broke down crying. I asked her if she knew that a doctor would deny me from being a surrogate given that I've never successfully carried a child to term. She said she knew that and she would just send my brother-in-law and I to a centre of excellence where we can pretend we're a couple and once I'm successfully inseminated then I would request a transfer from that provider to her OBGYN for the continuation of care. My father intervened and said that asking me to do something a doctor wouldn't sign off on was a terrible way to attempt to begin motherhood. You could tell he wasn't on board with any of it but didn't want to pick a side. He asked her why she was so uncomfortable with the idea of a surrogate and that's when my brother-in-law interjected and said, Don't try to berate my wife with these stupid questions. Talk to your selfish bee of a daughter about why she can't help her sister. That immediately shifted the mood. My boyfriend started to yell at him for calling me a B-word. My dad told him he could not disrespect his daughters in his home. Everything just went up in flames. My sister was crying, asking me to do her this favour, practically begging. I told her that if I could trade places with her, I would, but I was scared and just didn't want to die. I think that was the first time I'd said that out loud ever. We couldn't get more solved after that. My dad asked my brother-in-law to leave because he couldn't control himself and refused to apologise. When he was walking out, my sister told him she would meet him in the car, asked me to come and talk to her on the porch, just the two of us. I went out with her and she apologised for her husband calling me a bee, said that they were just on edge and it's been stressful. I told her that she shouldn't apologise for him and that would figure something out. She asked me to reconsider and just kept saying, You don't get it, you don't understand. When I pressured her for more, she admitted that her in-laws made a cruel joke at one of their dinners recently about how she was a murderer, referring to the child she lost. She said she asked him why he didn't stand up for her when they made the joke, and he said because it was true. He made some weird comments about her not being able to make up for it, and how he was so excited to see what their child would look like, and how he would never be able to look into a child and see pieces of them both. So she had the idea of me carrying the child, and he was super on board. But the way she said it was like he planted a seed, and she seems to believe it was her idea. She said she hadn't seen him that excited since the baby, and she just needed my help to get everything back to normal. I tried to explain to her that nothing would ever be normal again, and that what she was trying to do was the wrong thing. But he just started blaring the horn, rushing her to the car, and she said she'd call me later. I feel like I may lose my sister, but now I'm not even willing to donate my eggs for her to have a baby with him. I took your guys' advice and looked up the egg donation process, and wow, not at all what I expected. I want her to divorce him. I'm never going to help her procreate with that man. I genuinely think I'd be a surrogate for her to be a single mum before I'd ever allow her to place his child in me, or take my eggs to even create a child with him. I had no clue that his family was pushing so much guilt onto her. I've literally been jumping at my phone every time it rings because I know she'll be calling soon and I'll have to tell her that. I'm terrified I'll lose my sister but I can't and won't do this. Probably won't update anymore but thanks for all the help. I'll probably create my own reddit now because I'm kind of obsessed with the site, lol. Jeez, how deranged must your mindset be to genuinely think that you killed a child because you had a miscarriage? Like seriously, the husband and his family all sound like absolute pricks. Let's read some more comments. What a manipulative idiot he is. Your sister should divorce and stay away from her in-laws. No wonder that man is that way. He needs therapy ASAP. Wow, can't believe her own husband called her a murderer for having a miscarriage. I hope she wakes up from the brainwashing. 
Not just a miscarriage, a miscarriage because of the car accident she was in. Dude's a friggin' monster. Oh my god, I was getting sick to my stomach reading this. So afraid they had pushed you into this. Thank god you came to the conclusion that that awful man should not be a father. His family shouldn't be around children either. Somehow your sister needs to realise that even if she finds a way to get him his child, she will always be treated like this by him and his family. In fact, he may escalate. I don't know if he was once a decent guy or not. Many couples who lose a child change and can't recover. Concentrate on saving your sister, not the a-hole. This reeks of him having twin fetish. The way he's acting is more like a toddler who was shown candy and right before eating it, someone snatched it up. He can't see you and your twin as two different people and he thinks since you look alike, you should act like each other. Apart from identity fraud and its issues, and the fact that you acting like you or your sister would also lead to insurance fraud, I bet he was going to bring up just having sex with you at some point and get it over with so they can save money for when the baby comes. Don't block him, he'll get drunk at some point and start sending you messages, keep those for a restraining order. Your dad was right there, why not tell your dad about the conversation and then try to help your sister with your dad's help? Opie replies, I did tell my dad what she said when I went back inside. He didn't seem surprised. He said that he went to dinner with her in-laws per her request and he saw the change in how they treated her. He said that, same as me, he didn't know how bad it was. I know he did reach out to her and tell her that my brother-in-law would no longer be welcome back until he apologises to me. He's hoping that she'll still come over tonight and we can talk to her together without his presence. This is all super new territory for us. We were under the impression that she was in a happy, loving relationship. We aren't idiots and knew the loss of their child did shake their relationship, but I could not have imagined this in my wildest dreams. Jeremiah has always been so cool. I used to see him like an annoying brother. Now I see he's emotionally abusive and extremely manipulative. I don't think the loss made this change. She's been at his mercy from day one. She's been financially dependent on him from the go. Everything he demanded he was given because he could put her out with nothing in a heartbeat. Your denial made his actions public, that's what changed. You're likely seeing how he's been treating her for the entirety of her marriage. Yeah, an interesting theory there, and probably makes sense. Let's go to another update. I know I said I wouldn't update anymore, but so much has happened, and I can't explain the weird relief I feel typing my madness onto this website. My friend did say that I could just have this Reddit page which relieves so much stress because lord knows I wouldn't have made one if I had to do it myself. I had to watch a YouTube on how to properly use this site and what some of the things mean because people kept commenting that I was karma farming. That's neither here nor there. On to the update. A lot of you suggested that I be more careful around my brother-in-law for fear that he would become violent. I did not listen and I kick myself now for not doing so. I thought I knew my family well enough and that this was just a bump in the road. How extremely naive of me. My sister called me back the next morning, the day after he called me a bee. I unfortunately missed the call because I was in the shower. When I called back, no answer. It was a normal day until we got to my father's house that night for football. Kickoff had just happened when my sister walked in. She asked my dad if he could come outside and talk to her husband. My dad said no because the game was on and he could either wait until the commercial break or he could come in and apologise like a man in front of everyone who witnessed him disrespect me. She took a breath and told him how he wasn't being completely fair. She tried to bring up a previous situation drawing likeliness and it infuriated my father. He told her how he didn't raise her to make herself small and weak for a man and said whatever he did that made her think this is how you should have a healthy relationship, he was sorry for failing her as a father. Her eyes started to water and she just stormed out without another word. When I went out to my car after the game was over, I had two flat tyres and a broken passenger front window. My dad put two donuts on the car, used his truck to tow the car into his garage, and told me to take his other vehicle and he would get the car fixed and I could come and get it whenever I had time, but not to worry. He asked if I wanted to stay the night. I declined. I called my sister. She didn't answer, so I texted her and said a lot, but for the sake of keeping some of it private, I said, I can't believe this is where we are. Loving a man should never call for destroying your family in the process. She responded by saying, That's the problem. My family is already destroyed, and you aren't willing to help me put it together. 
I again tried to call her after that. No answer. On the drive home, I noticed a car following me. When I was able to get a better view of it, I realized it was my sister's mother-in-law's car. I know this only because she has a very distinct car decal that I've literally never seen anywhere else. I freaked out and called my boyfriend asking him to meet me back at my place. When I pulled up at the home into the driveway, the car pulled in behind me. Luckily, my boyfriend was turning down the street. By the time my brother-in-law got out of his mum's car and tried to walk to me, my boyfriend was running out of his car yelling at him. Jeremiah immediately started yelling, I just wanted to apologise, I just wanted to apologise. Him and my boyfriend got into a small scuffle before he got into his mum's car and sped off. He did hit my boyfriend's car in the process. It didn't appear to be intentional and his car is still drivable. After this, I obviously didn't feel too comfortable at home anymore. I packed a bag and went to my boyfriend's house and haven't really been back home since. My dad did add a camera and floodlight to the back door and driveway, but I'm honestly not too sure I want to go back, although I know I will have to at some point. Yes, I reached out to my sister. No, she did not answer or respond at all that night or the following day. After that, I would notice that on one day a red car would be following me, the next a black one. You know you may say I was scared and just thinking people were following me, but I would notice them, begin to drive to the police station per instruction from my dad, just for them to then turn once the station was in sight. On Sunday, I went to brunch with a few friends to celebrate one's upcoming wedding and discuss bridal shower details. The waiter came to me and told me my husband was up front and it was an emergency. Thinking it was my boyfriend and she was just mistaken, I went up to find my brother-in-law. I approached him in an attempt to not make a scene, speaking low, and asking him to leave or I would call my dad. He told me that everything just went too far and he just wanted to apologise. We were kind of in the doorway and it was just awkward people funnelling in and saying excuse me, so I suggested we step out and get out of the way. When we went outside, he apologised for calling me a b-word and said he didn't feel that way. He told me I didn't understand how hard it was for him. And I cut him off there, saying how hard it was for him didn't matter to me because his behaviour was becoming too chaotic and abusive to not only my sister, but everyone else. He told me that he understood how I could feel like that, but asked me to again reconsider. He reached for my stomach and I instantly stepped back and told him he needed to leave and we could set up a time to talk with my dad, but him stalking me was an issue and we could talk later or I would call the police. He grabbed a fistful of my hair as I was walking back into the restaurant, saying, Don't you frickin' walk away from me. Honestly, I don't remember much after that. Everything just went really quickly and a few bystanders got involved. He ended up fleeing before the cops could come. A report was filed. Two days ago, he tried to come up to my airport terminal, telling them he was my husband and there was an emergency. Same BS he pulled at the restaurant. He was arrested after refusing to leave. He was of course bailed out and has since taken to messaging me the most vile messages. My sister did leave after the show he put on at my job. She's currently staying with our dad, but has been asking me to drop the charges, making excuses for him and has been very adamant that he didn't hit me at the restaurant despite my literal scalp bleeding because of how hard he yanked my hair and the small scratches I have on my neck and arms from him continuing to escalate aggressively when strangers tried to help. Some of the texts are him telling me the vile things he's going to do to me, how he'll get me pregnant and I'll be stuck with him for the rest of my life, how he knows that I'm the woman who is going to bring him a son, and if I don't make it easy for him, we'll both die before he gives up. Just really concerning. I blocked his number so all of these are coming from random text now apps, told the police and they said there's no way to prove it's actually him, so until he acts on it, nothing can be done. I'm literally scared all the time. My boyfriend drives me to work and on top of the regular precautions I take more and I can barely sleep now. I send my sister a screenshot every time her husband messages me and she's taken to no longer interacting. My dad has asked me to stop doing this because it's beating her down but I told him that I can't even believe she'd defended him during some of this and she needs to see the harassment that her husband is committing. I feel defeated. I don't even know if me and my sister can come back from this. I feel like I've basically taken over my boyfriend's life and I feel terrible about it. He hasn't said anything, but his regular gym visits are cut off sometimes if he has to pick me up or drop me off when I have to go to work or go anywhere else because I'm scared. Being gone for a day due to flights, 
I know allows him to do more of his routine, but now we're basically forced to live together, which I enjoy, but I'm not sure that he does. We got into an argument the other day about the AC temperature. I feel like my life is slowly devolving into madness and I can't breathe. One commenter says, I would unblock him and silence his number so you don't get notifications. That way the police would know he's the one sending messages if he uses his number again. And for your sister, your relationship will never be the same again. Even if you find your way back to each other's, it will still be different. And even though your father is helping you, if he says something again about you messaging your sister what her husband is writing to you, make him remember that your brother-in-law actually threatened to assault you and your sister is still with him. A potential R-word. Opie updates further. Hi, I don't really know where to start, but currently my brother-in-law is stalking me. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of why, but he wants me to have his baby. Unfortunately, the story just gets more chaotic. I had his number blocked, but at the advice of others unblocked him due to the police stating that the messages coming in from unknown numbers couldn't be traced to him. He has sent me a few messages from his actual number, saying that we need to talk and get to an agreement. I of course have not engaged. The vile messages from the strange numbers have continued. I cannot confirm, but I always feel somebody following me. Going to get my coffee from Duncan? I feel like the blue car is following me. I've gotten to the point where I actually have taken a leave from work. I've completely abandoned my apartment and moved in with my now fiancé. I ran into him a few days ago grocery shopping. He approached me from behind and rubbed a hand on my back. When I jumped and screamed attempting to draw attention, he pretended to be confused, throwing his hands up. I'm sorry, I'll leave you alone. I apologize. He seemed so genuine that the witnesses basically accepted his apology on my behalf and sent him on his way. I literally couldn't even talk. Barely breathe to even form words outside of someone help. I felt so helpless. The next day my apartment was broken into and completely destroyed. The next day I got a message from a strange number that read, It'll only get worse. I'm terrified. My sister is currently living with my dad, and she's positive that it's not her husband. She said things went too far, and he's been in contact with her about getting a clear head and being out of the state because he feels as if he's been unhinged and needs to recant her. I don't even know how to convince her that he's lying. The police seem to refuse to help because he hasn't done anything wrong. I feel like I have to actually die or him hurt me in a serious way for anything to get done. Please help me. I'm currently in the US, so please, if you know of any laws, anything that can help, or urge the police to become more helpful, I would appreciate it. I cannot sleep. I'm coming to the point of simply not wanting to leave my apartment. Please help me. One comment says, Get a lawyer. You need to get a protective order. Opie replies, I have a lawyer. I've submitted all documentation I have available. Cameras around the house, and I have a dash cam that records even when I'm out of the car. The lawyer is telling me to continue to gather evidence because the evidence that we have, quote, won't be enough to effectively show a court that he is harassing me. It's like they want me to set myself up and prove that I'm in danger. I don't know what I can do besides put myself out as bait. Yeah, not sure you want to do that. Okay, on to the final update. This has been absolutely insane, but Reddit has a place in my heart forever. I'm going to shorten this as much as I can. If you have questions, I'll answer a few when and if I can. My boyfriend realized I was looking into apartments. I absolutely was going to temporarily rent an apartment like an idiot and asked me why. I told him that I felt like he wanted his space back to himself and he proposed. I'm literally engaged. Now I feel a lot better about taking over his apartment, lol. I posted in the advice reddit explaining that my brother-in-law was escalating. He approached me in the grocery store. I unfortunately did not do well with standing up for myself there. Not my best moment. He broke into my home, did some damage in my bedroom, and broke a few things in my kitchen he knows I love. Mugs and espresso machine. No, I wasn't there, and yes, cameras were installed after. I took a leave of absence from work. Basically stayed holed up in my fiancé's, holy crap, apartment. My sister had been ignoring my texts and not engaging with me until I got a random call. When I answered, she was on the phone sobbing. I asked her what was wrong, thinking something happened to her dad. She explained that she'd been following her husband and she knew he was following me. She said she was telling me because she went to the police and they explained they were sending someone out to talk to me. 
we sat on the phone for five hours. She explained that after the hair pulling incident, her light bulb went off and she went into PI mode, explained that it got to the point where she was concerned for my safety, which is why she made the decision to go to the police. She apologised for putting so much pressure on me. She said that while she would like to blame it on her husband, a tiny piece of her was actually shocked. I said no. She explained that the DNA aspect doesn't matter to her, it was my brother-in-law that insisted on that, and she just wanted her family to be whole. She will be staying at my home with me, just temporarily until the divorce is final and the dust is settled. I'm sure he won't make the divorce easy, but they do have a prenup so it shouldn't be too difficult. What do I know, I'm not married, yet. Sorry, I'm literally so excited. Sidebar, I did find out after my father slipped and shared that my sister actually had proof that her husband burglarised my home. She apparently held on to the information because she needed to decide the right thing to do. He said that when she told him that he told her she didn't have a choice and he made her go immediately. She apparently didn't put up much of a fight. My dad says he feels like she just needed someone to actually say it to her for her to get it, but I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this. I am happy that she made the right decision in the end. The police came to my fiancé's apartment the next day. They took my statement and explained to me that they wanted to simply have an agent patrol me for a day in an unmarked, and if he followed me, he would be arrested. They didn't inform me of what car was following me, but did say that it would be happening immediately, so if I felt I was being followed, not to panic, basically. He was literally caught within two hours of me leaving my fiancé's apartment. We went on a date, and literally as we pulled into the third location, he was pulled over and arrested. I drank more margaritas than I should have that night at the restaurant. The detective did tell me I would be getting a call from the DA's office, which I assume will be tomorrow. Honestly, based on how this has all gone, I doubt they'll hold him accountable much, but I am hoping that with them having his phone, there is physical proof that he was sending me the texts, which will add to his punishment. I appreciate everyone who told me to get a gun. I'm actually terrified of guns. A kid from my high school was playing with a gun and killed himself mistakenly. No, it wasn't in school or anything like that. It was at his home, but when we heard about it, it reinforced my fear of guns. No guns for me. But I did buy bear spray and a knife. I have my first flight back at work this week and I'm so excited to be back to my regularly scheduled program. Today's football games were amazing and I was able to watch them with my sister, my dad and my fiancé. I hope I don't have another reason to update this ever. Thank you all so much. Jeez, yeah, it took a bit, but I'm glad we ended on a good note there. Let's hope that, at the very least, a restraining order comes through. But yeah, like Opie said, it's a bit hard seeing them doing anything worthwhile here. It's pretty scary the frequency in which he was following her and messing with her life. Goes to show how deranged some people can get when you don't expect it from them, that's for sure. Alrighty, well that's all we've got for that story, and we'll leave it there and move on to another one. Let me know your thoughts down below. Alrighty, we're back on relationship advice for the next one. It was written by user Hoshi Seasons, and it's titled Me and my boyfriend got into an argument about my lack of understanding of his favourite film. Hi folks, first time poster, long time reader. I'll try and keep it pretty short and simple. The other night, my boyfriend and I had our usual movie night, and he begged me to watch A Clockwork Orange, his favourite film, with him. I'd always heard of it, it's an incredibly popular film, but never knew the plot or anything really. I of course agreed, but quickly I realised that this was not my type of film at all. I'm a multiple SA survivor, and I'm incredibly triggered and uncomfortable during scenes of SA and violence. When I voiced this, asking him if maybe we could watch something else, he got irritated with me and told me I just had to finish it to really understand. Again, I asked him to please turn it off. He did, very angrily, and then criticised me for not taking an interest in the things he likes. I found this to be incredibly unfair, as I've always gotten involved and excited about the things in his life. He continued to insult my intelligence and lack of understanding of the art of film, and I just left it at that. He knows about my past traumas, and has always been very sensitive and understanding about everything. I've never seen him like this, and over a movie no less. I'm just feeling hurt and confused, and really not heard. He hasn't called to apologise or anything, it's just been total radio silence. Any advice would be appreciated. Thanks so much for reading. 
Yeah, I think we can all agree showing a movie like that to someone who's an essay survivor is absolutely despicable. But just in general, and obviously this is subjective because it's film, but anyone who says Clockwork Orange is their favourite film, in my opinion, doesn't like the feeling of happiness. Like, it's a great film in its own context and everything, but man, it's depressing. I would look at anyone in a funny way if they said A Clockwork Orange was their favourite movie of all time. Let's go to the comments. It's really alarming that he wouldn't be able to reach past his own minor feelings of disappointment about you not being able to enjoy the movie to emphasise with the fact that this movie triggered your PTSD. I mean, everybody knows Clockwork Orange is freaking intense. Parts of it are downright repellent. I mean, think about it. He showed a movie that depicted assault grotesquely to an assault survivor and then expected you to just be fine with it. That doesn't say very good things about him. You are well within your rights to expect an apology for his abhorrent behaviour here. He needs to get the F over himself. Opie replies, The whole thing was just honestly very bizarre to me. We've had very long talks about my past, and then it seemed like he flipped a switch and didn't care about it at all. His outburst was just really shocking and confusing. He was fine with being the sensitive and supportive boyfriend just until it had any effect on him. There is something special about the fanboy heights some men achieve over a clockwork orange. My husband loves it too. It's a classic, I get it. That does not mean it's for everyone, especially if it triggers past traumas. You aren't in the wrong. He's being an ass. Stick to your guns. You aren't required to like it just because he does, and he frankly owes you an apology. Opie replies, Thank you. I'm a chronic people pleaser, so it's always been hard to stick to my guns. But I feel like this is the time I really have to. It was just really shocking. The commenter adds, I understand how that can be, but you're so completely in the right here. I'm sorry he behaved that way. That is atrocious. And Opie replies again, Thank you. I've been staying at a friend's apartment for the past couple of nights. Feeling like a burden. Ugh. I'm going to give him a call tonight to talk. Let's go to an update. A day later. First of all, thank you to all the kind people who commented on my original post. Those who told me to stick to my guns made me feel stronger and have saved me from further years of being totally stepped on. Like the original post said, my boyfriend and I got into a heated argument because I, an assault survivor, was incredibly uncomfortable watching a clockwork orange with him. I had left their apartment for a few days and had some time to think. I've been with him for three years now and it's almost as if this tiny little bomb caused my whole world to blow up. I've realised how many times I've put my own feelings aside for him, how many things I've missed out on because I was busy catering to his feelings. Yesterday, I went home so we could talk, and needless to say, it didn't go well. He was still furious with me, claiming I never care about him or his interests. I counteracted this by listing almost everything I've done for him. I asked him why he was being like this. He knows what I've been through and has always been so understanding. Cue the real person that he is coming through. He said something along the lines of, Honestly, I was just going along with it because you seemed like you needed support, but I don't see the big deal asking me why I couldn't just get over it because it happened so long ago. I've been assaulted three times, once when I was 10, again at 16, and then again last year. But that's besides the point, even if it happened once a thousand years ago, it would still affect a survivor. He then continued to blame me for his aggression, saying he was angry because we haven't had sex in a couple of weeks. I have bad spouts of body hatred due to my PTSD and do not like being touched when I'm in this headspace. He advised that I maybe try going to therapy twice a week instead of just once, and maybe that could help. I didn't know what to say or do. I was terrified of the man in front of me. All of this over a movie? I was shocked and hurt. So, I left. His name is on the lease, so I'm not in any binds with him, thank God. I packed my crap and didn't look back. I'm still really shaken up. I've known him for so long and never saw this coming. It was like an immediate switch flipped on in his brain. I didn't know that man who I was talking to, and I never want to again. I'm staying at a friend's place for now until I make enough to rent my own. Very thankful for my steady job and even steadier friends. Just needed to get this off my chest, I suppose. I haven't really told my friends the extent of what happened. I don't know why. Maybe I'm embarrassed. I don't know. Thank you all for the support. Thank you for reading. One commenter says, I don't know you, but I'm super proud of you for leaving. He revealed who he was, and it would only get worse now that he doesn't feel the need to pretend anymore. Opie replies, Thank you so much. That's what I've been thinking about as well. What else could happen if I stayed, you know? 
I'm just a bit of a mess, a total mess really, because I've watched three years of loving and trusting someone blow up in my face over something so insignificant. Can't you get over your PTSD? Dude, you couldn't even get over someone disliking your favourite movie. Holy crap, she dodged a frickin' nuke. I've had the misfortune of knowing people like that. There's nothing you can say or do to convince them that your feelings are valid. They won't accept any answer that they don't personally agree with. When she said his favourite film was A Clockwork Orange, it was immediately obvious her issue would be the graphic depiction of sexual assault. Then when she said she's a survivor, it blew my mind any guy would think it's a good idea for her to watch that. Turns out he's just a total piece of crap with no empathy or humanity. I was hoping he's just really stupid. I say, why not both? Because that's what this guy is. Alright guys, that's the end of that story. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. Thanks for making it to the end. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.